there's three shapes that we can transform and they behave exactly the same. And those are the E, the A, and the D shapes. You probably know them from your tuning, E, A, D. So let's transform those shapes into other chords. For example, let's start with the E shape. I'm gonna be throwing in diagrams over there from the playbook. So that E shape, if we wanna make it an E minor, there's only one note we gotta change, and it's the thinnest fretted note. What do I mean with thinnest fretted note? The thinnest fretted string that we're fretting, the thinnest one, we're gonna move that note one fret towards the headstock. So if this is an E, the thinnest fretted string of that E shape, we're gonna move that note one fret towards the headstock, making it an open string. E minor. Okay, this also works for the A major shape and for the D major shape. So if we have an A major, the thinnest fretted string of that shape is the second string. If we move that note one fret towards the headstock, we've got an A minor. Pretty simple, right? Let's check out D. Okay, the thinnest fretted string of that D shape is this note over here, this string, the first string. We move that note one fret towards the headstock and we've got a D minor. But it doesn't end there, we can keep modifying those shapes using the middle fretted string. So what do I mean with that? E major. Now we're gonna use the middle fretted string to create seven and major seven chords. Okay, so middle fretted string to create a seventh chord, we're gonna move that two frets towards the headstock. So this is the middle fretted string, that's the fourth string, one, two, making it an open string, that's an E7 chord. Let's check out A if it works the same way. So this is A. The middle fretted string is the third string. <laughs> I had a look. I'm going to move that note two frets towards the headstock, making it an open string. So just like that. I'm going to play like this, and I'm just going to lift up my finger. Okay. Now let's check out D. The middle fretted string is this one over here, the second string. So we're gonna move that note, one, two, towards the headstock, and that's a D7. Now if we wanna create major seven chords, think of it as seven is two, major is one more. So instead of moving it two frets towards the headstock, we're gonna add one fret. So we're just gonna move it one fret towards the headstock. So let's start again. E. The middle fretted string, same as the seventh, it's two, but we're just gonna move it one this time, so that's an E major seven, okay? Let's check out A. The middle fretted string, we're gonna move it one string towards the headstock, so I'm just gonna play like that. That's an A major seven. D, the middle fretted string, we're gonna move it one fret towards the headstock, so I'm just gonna fret it with one finger. Or you can fret it like that. Or you can fret it like that. <laughs> However you wanna fret it, but that's a D major seven. But the cool thing about all this is that you can combine both formulas together. So let's play an E minor seven, for example. So we start with E. To create a minor chord, we're gonna move the thinnest fretted string one fret towards the headstock. Cool, that's an E minor, right? Now we're gonna move the middle fretted string of that E shape. To create a seventh chord, we move it two frets towards the headstock. So one and two, making it an open. So that's an E minor seven. Pretty cool, right? Let's create um, A minor seven, for example. So we've got an A gonna play like that, come on. A, the thinnest fretted string, one fret towards the headstock, making it an A minor. And now the middle fretted string, two frets towards the headstock. One, two, making it an open string, A minor seven. And that's how easily you can transform those three shapes into all these other chords. Now, here's what's really cool. 
Now we can move any one of those shapes we discovered, any one of those chord shapes, to other positions of the fretboard. And how do we do that? Okay, so we're gonna get the E shape, for example, right? If I, if you move just this note, for example, that's an E note. What happens to that E note if I move it up one fret? It becomes another note, right? And if I move it again, another note. So it becomes all the other notes across the fretboard. Okay, if I get in shape, I'm just gonna play the, the strings I'm fretting right now, okay? So this is part of that shape, that note. If I get this shape and move it to another fret on the fretboard, I move it one fret upward, if this note becomes another note, this chord becomes another chord. So one note becomes another note, one chord shape becomes another chord. Awesome, and you can play all the other chords. But here's what happens. If I just move those three strings, it's, very, it's sounding very nice because I'm only playing those three strings. One, two, three, right? Well, it's actually five, four, three. And I'm moving them, and it sounds nice. But what happens if I strum through all six strings? Over here, it's sounding cool. But what happens over here? Sounding a little funky, right? So what we have to do is move all the remaining notes on the open strings and make them follow that chord shape. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna switch from using these fingers to using these fingers. Same exact shape. Check it out. So this is the shape, right? And that's the shape too, but with different fingering. Now I freed up this finger. So when I move that shape, I can also move this note, this note, and this note over here with my index finger, creating a bar chord. And that's why they're called bar chords. We've got open chords, which utilize open strings, and we've got bar chords, which utilize barred strings, okay? So this is your bar, this is your chord shape. So we've got E, F, and all the other chords. Let me use an A as an example because it's easier, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? So we've got an A shape, we're gonna play like that, but if we move it, it's gonna start sounding funky because the fifth string, the first string, and the sixth string are left behind, okay? As are left open. So I just move the second, the third, and the fourth. Ah. So what can I do? I can change my fingers from this to this. And now I've got this finger. This is not easy to do, but it's how it works, okay? Now I've got this finger to move these notes over here and follow along with the chord shape, just like that. And that's a B chord. I can also play a C chord, a D chord, an E chord, an F chord, a G chord, and an A chord again. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A again. Okay, but here's what's cool about this. Remember, we can we could transform those chord shapes E A D into other chords just by moving a couple notes, right? So let's start with the A because I think it's the easiest to to visualize A B C D E F G, right? So we got an A to create an A minor. We got that thinnest fretted string, the second, and move that note one fret towards the headstock. Okay. Now I'm gonna change my fingers, same chord shape. And now I'm gonna start moving that chord shape across the fretboard to create all the other chords. A minor, B minor, C minor, D minor, E minor, F minor, G minor, an 
playing A minor again. Cool, right? But what if we want to play a B minor 7? Same thing. To create an A minor 7, A, we transformed that into A minor, and then we got the middle fretted string and moved it two frets over to the headstock. That note, that middle fretted string, two frets towards the headstock. Okay, so that's an A minor 7. Okay, let's change our fingers, same chord shape, and start moving it. A minor 7, B minor 7, C minor 7, D minor 7, E minor 7. <laughs> you, you, you can see how this works, right? And we can do that for every one of those chord shapes. We just move a couple notes, they become other chords, and now we can move those chords up the fretboard to create all the other chords. Pretty cool, right? This is explained in detail inside of the Beginner Guitars Playbook. Go and check it out if you want. It's pretty cool, 67 pages. You, you won't be a beginner very long, okay? I'll see you inside, ciao.